Toyota has officially just said, we believe that what Toyota's US dealers are doing right now is damaging our brand. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand. As you know, here with the family, Shanna's doing cancer treatments for a stage four cancer. The tumor size has gone down by, what's well, gone down by about 50% in the last eight weeks, which is amazing. In fact, it's, she's really only done proper treatment for seven of those eight weeks because the first week she was too sick for various reasons, couldn't handle a lot of the treatments they were doing. So seven weeks really officially of treatments and it's come down 50%. Now, of course, it has spread through her body. So we've seen some disappearance in some other places in the body. Lymph nodes have seen a reduction or elimination massive improvements. Thank you to every one of you. It's been 4,100 people donate and it's been amazing. Well, I have needed that help. You guys couldn't have done it without you. It's just that simple. If you want to know more about what's been happening there, I'll put a link in the description. I'll have a new video up on the GoFundMe page very soon, but just want to say thank you once again. It's really, it's an amazing result. I mean, we're talking about stage four cancer here. They said it was incurable. Maybe, maybe they were wrong. Maybe these treatments are actually going to work. Toyota's dealers are marking up cars. Now, of course, this is a common practice for many dealerships in the United States. And it's one of the big advantages of, say, Rivian, Lucid, Tesla, selling direct to customers, not having this kind of nonsense. Customers can literally go on websites, buy online in five minutes. You don't have to deal with any of this crap. And it's crap. It's really, really sucky. Ford CEO Jim Farley has said that. He hates that Ford dealers are doing this. Mary Barra has said the same thing. She hates that GM dealers are doing this. Well, now Toyota dealers are doing the same thing. We already knew they were doing it, but these markups now, they're at the level of just being an embarrassment. Even Toyota themselves said that as well. Now, Toyota released the GR Corolla. It's like a hot hatch version of the Corolla. I think it's incredibly ugly, uh, but I mean, people seem to like it. Hot hatch fans seem to like it. If you're a hot hatch fan, guys, don't buy this thing. In a few years, people will look at it and say, you know, you got conned. You thought buying a special edition of a Nokia, the Nokia special edition, whatever it is, combustion version, you thought it would be awesome. And you conned yourself into thinking it would be a classic. All people are saying this on these websites now. Oh, instant classic. It just keep that for 10 years. Classic car, classic. Yeah, good luck on that. I mean, how valuable will these so-called classics be when it costs you 300 US dollars to simply fill up the tank? That's what's going to happen. Do you really think the average person is going to go, yeah, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to pay 140,000 US dollars for this classic hot hatch, right? That they can't put fuel in because it's so damn expensive. That's where we're headed. Once the majority of the car market worldwide is electric, it's going to become very expensive to fill your car. So don't get tricked by these dealerships. Don't get tricked by this kind of this myth. It's a myth. It's a complete myth that people think that if you buy one of these so-called special edition hot hatches or special edition whatever it is, Mustang or anything else, that they're going to be worth double the amount in 10 years, 15 years. They're not. It's lunacy. Look at Norway. Norway is the perfect example. Have a look at the resale value of gasoline powered cars in Norway and then get back to me. See how that's gone over there in Norway. I've received emails from people in Norway saying, I'm trying to sell my car. I can't sell it. It's not good. Now, the Toyota GR Corolla Marizo Edition, I don't even know how you pronounce that, but anyhow, is the raciest, most focused Corolla in history. It's also the ugliest, but anyhow, is it worth $140,000? Uh, hell no, it's not. I mean, give me a Tesla Model S Platt or a Model X Platt or a Lucid Sapphire or whatever over these things. One Texas, now there's dealers in the US that are charging crazy amounts. One of them is charging around 100,000 US dollars for a GR Corolla. That's about twice the MSRP of what Toyota is selling them for, well, officially. Now, another one is charging around 20,000 US dollars. There's another dealer with it selling about 30,000 US dollars. Basically, they're more expensive than a BMW M3. More, I mean, about the same price as a Tesla Model S Plaid. It's crazy. Toyota just basically took a Corolla, they turned it into a four-wheel drive hot hatch, made a put a turbo in it, put a ridiculous, ugly body kit on it. And um, yeah, they said, well, we're going to make a limited number of these. And if you're smart, you'll buy one because this is the last Corolla, well, it's the last hot hatch. 
We're talking about the last of their breed. But the thing is, if you really want a muff, if you really want a powerful car, if you really want a gasoline powered car that's going to rock your socks off and get you excited, why on earth would you buy a Corolla? You've got to be mad. I mean, you can get a Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Widebody Jailbreak. You can get a car that'll do zero to 62 miles an hour in 1.8 seconds, gasoline powered thing. It sounds crazy. I mean, that's, that's exciting. Even if you love EVs, that's exciting. That's something that maybe there will be some value to. I mean, that's a very limited edition type car. Buy one of those. I mean, for goodness sake, who in their right minds are, who are the people? People are paying a lot of money for these, for these highly stressed. I mean, you're talking about a three cylinder engine here with 400 horsepower. It's ridiculous. What are the chances of that, you know, this thing is going to last long term? I don't know. I could be wrong. But considering this is one of the most highly stressed petrol powered engines ever, I'd say not real good. Now, this is what Toyota had to say. The brand has asked its dealers to screen buyers to actually work out whether or not they fit the brand profile. Now, Toyota all of a sudden thinks they're Ferrari. You've got to go and you've got to have an interview with Toyota to see if you fit their profile for purchasing their um their hot hatch. Now, Toyota said, if anything, we believe that this is damaging our brand. So we're trying to jump on it straight away. What are Toyota actually doing to stop these price gouges? All these kind of ridiculous price markups, which just look silly. Nothing. Um, they really don't actually care. That's the truth. Toyota said, we are making every effort to get these cars to enthusiasts. We're trying our best. It's not a perfect solution, but we're trying our best within the laws of the country we operate in. The CEO of Toyota here in Australia said, my simple message and Toyota's simple message to its customers, don't pay, don't do it. Wait, don't pay over retail for a Toyota. <laughs> don't pay over retail for a Toyota says Toyota. Well, there you go. Take Toyota's advice. Don't pay over retail for a Toyota. In fact, don't buy a Toyota, period. They don't make any compelling EVs. They won't for at least three, four, five years, if ever. By the time Toyota's actual dedicated EV platform electric car actually hits the market in 2026 or 2027, there'll be much better version three, version four, version five EVs from other brands. Just forget Toyota. Move on to something better. Many customers already have. Sales are down by 25% in China, 13% in the United States, and they're trending down. Like I said, Toyota, Nokia. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.